I recently saw an advert for a fuel company that said that they had a new fuel, and that this fuel was carbon neutral. This company also happens to be one of the biggest polluters in the entire world. It was Shell. I went to their website and it said that they were doing this by purchasing carbon offsets when someone bought the fuel. And it turns out that lots of companies are now claiming to be going carbon neutral by buying offsets, including the airline Qantas and Heathrow Airport. So, disregarding all of the other problems associated with fossil fuel production, if companies are beginning to make claims about going carbon neutral using offsets, we need to make sure that they actually work. And for this, we need a bit of context. Very broadly speaking, there are two man-made sources of carbon dioxide. One is from land and ocean use and degradation, like the removal of trees, soils and grasslands, while the second is from burning fossil fuels. But here's an important point. Without people, fossil fuels are not a large part of the carbon cycle. Carbon is stored in many ways. In the atmosphere, dissolved in the oceans, in soils and in things like coal and oil. Carbon flows between these naturally as part of the carbon cycle. However, it does not naturally flow from fossil fuels to the atmosphere, except through volcanic activity, which happens over millions of years. So this is the problem. Because the carbon in our atmosphere comes from two places, again, broadly, even if we restored every degraded habitat on Earth, the carbon from fossil fuels would still be in the air. The land and ocean's function as a carbon sink is limited to the amount of carbon stored before they were degraded. There simply isn't enough space on the planet to absorb all of the carbon that we've emitted without causing things like ocean acidification. We certainly need to reforest and restore. Degradation has a carbon debt of its own to make up, but we can't expect habitat restoration alone to make us carbon neutral, which brings us back to offsetting. If we look at all of this so far, we see that carbon offsetting is not the same as zero carbon. If you restore a habitat, you aren't sequestering fossil fuel emissions, but those that were released when the habitat was degraded in the first place. Companies don't like to approach the problem this way, especially their marketing teams. What happens if we use our offsets to invest in clean energy? We're dealing with carbon from fossil fuels that way. Let's say you take a plane trip which produces one unit of carbon dioxide, and by investing in carbon offsets you help to create a wind farm which replaces a coal-fired power station, and prevents one unit of carbon dioxide from being released into the air. So now you've offset an equal amount to your flight, and companies claim you're carbon neutral, but the whole process has actually produced one unit of carbon emissions. So let's break this example down. Your plane has produced one, the coal-fired power station would have produced one, and the wind farm has prevented one. So the total, in fact, is one, not zero, which is, of course, not carbon neutral. So when you offset, you certainly decrease the amount of carbon going into the atmosphere, but some is still emitted. The best option is, of course, not to fly, and for clean energy projects and restoration projects to help sequester carbon that's already up in the air. With that in mind, offsets are an awesome thing to do. Make sure you do it when you do fly, but not flying is still the best and first choice that you should make. And don't let these big companies fool you into thinking that they're carbon neutral when they're not.